Okay, um, I'm getting opening requests. It's hard to play openings when I'm not playing a game, though. So let's accept someone. Um, hey Siri, where are you? Okay, Siri has abandoned me. So I have to um, I have to find a way to like get a random number. Hmm. Well, it's six forty-eight. So we'll do number four. One, two, three, four. Okay, casual game, five plus five. How something, something, something is finally watching me live. Well, welcome Hal. Thanks for watching. So the openings that I was recommended, I can't, like I can't play a reverse London, I can't play the Budapest, I can't play the King's Indian. Everyone was suggesting openings against d4. I need an opening against e4. I'll just wait until someone uh, recommends something. Scandi, okay. Scandi is the closest thing to a reverse London. And I could play, um, ooh, French I kind of would want to play. But okay, too late, playing a Scandi. I have a few students who play the Scandi for black. And I think it's a reasonable opening. It kind of gets repetitive, like a lot of my students' games are just they're they're entering the same structure and like they get good at playing this sort of structure, but sometimes it gets uh, I don't know. It's just redundant, <laughs> repetitive, redundant. Now I'm being I just feel I feel the redundancy like being uh, being created from this opening in my speech. Um, okay, I'm going to play bishop g4 first, and then e6. So this is what I've taught my students. Develop the bishop actively, play e6, put the bishop actively on d6, and then usually do the setup and decide whether I want to castle kingside or queenside. But the one thing I'll say about like Scandinavian is that there's more to chess than just playing these sort of structures. I think for anyone who plays Scandinavian consistently, it's a good opening for some time, but then at some point it helps to learn something beyond the realms of, uh, of these lines. I like the fact that he's committed to f3. Seems a little bit weakening. Maybe someday I'll play c5. Maybe you could play c5 right away. But no, let's be patient. I'll play c6. Because I just want to play queen c7, bishop d6, knight d7, and then decide. Can I play queen, h queen h4 on move 2? I don't think so. There is a line, though, I, I learned not too long ago, where queen h4, I think on move 3, it's a really interesting sort of opening trap. Maybe I'll show it if I remember after this game. Okay, so I don't know if he has a threat, but I'm scared anyway, so I'll play queen c7. Mm, bishop f4. Okay, so I'm fine with trading bishops. Like, if we trade, then I'm less cramped. Okay. So we trade. So you're going to play knight e4. He'll probably play knight e4 very soon. Got some initiative. I'll have to move the queen back probably to e7. I'm a bit underdeveloped. White is like almost fully developed. Now it's actually a question. Do I take with the pawn or the queen? I feel like most people would take with the queen. Avoiding the double pawns. But double pawns can sometimes be good. If I take with the pawn, play knight d7, castle queenside, then they use a g file and try and attack. It's a possibility. If I take with the queen, he plays knight e4 again. I'm going to take with the pawn. This would make things a bit imbalanced. And objectively, this might be the wrong decision, but. I just want to make the, the position sharp. I 
I'm curious if he um, if he's going to try and take advantage of my uh, failure to develop quickly, and maybe he'll go for something like rookie one in d5 and try and explode the center. But he's going for his, a slightly different plan, which I don't know what he's doing with this knight. I'll just continue developing. There's a move I would like to play at some point, this move f5, but that makes the bishop really sad. So maybe knight b6. That allows knight c5 at some point. So f5 right away. How sad is my bishop? It's pretty sad. If bishop f5, I mean, doesn't feel right. Okay, I'll play knight b6. No, go away, iTunes. So the, the thing about my mouse, there's like a there's a button on my mouse which like opens iTunes, and it's easy to accidentally press to somehow program the mouse to do something more useful. Bishop b3. So I could castle attack the d-pawn, he'll probably defend with rook d1. Let's do it. Just going along with the uh, original plan. I mean, get the king here and then someday use the g-file. I'm trying to figure out like how the pieces can start coordinating. Like I'm imagining, okay, let's start with rook g8, most flexible. Imagining, okay, I could potentially double up. I can get the bishop to maybe h3, and the knight maybe to f4, and then I could have potentially four attackers against the g pawn. And if he ever plays g3, I'll storm with h4, h5, h4. So the question here is how I want to execute. Probably I should start with bishop f5. Then he plays a5, knight d5, a6, b6. Looks okay. Don't know if I'm threatening bishop h3 immediately, because he'll have knight g3. Though bishop h3, knight g3, I have a tricky move, h5. And if he takes, I play h4. I should be happy there. I mean, I might just want to play knight d5 soon, too. So knight d5, knight f4 is a monster threat. So he's thinking, which is good. It's a sharp position. It's the thing about Scandinavian. Like, sometimes it's black who chooses whether to make it sharp or positional. Because almost always white castles kingside, and then black chooses whether to castle queenside or kingside. Okay, so he's going for a5. I mean, I don't think it makes any sense for him to take the knight. Unless he wants to get uh, a worse position. And knight f4 will come. I'm wondering, like, if he plays a6, I might already have knight f4. Or knife f4. Okay, so he plays knight g3. He wants to give me triple pawns. Get rid of my bishop. If I play knight f4, he plays queen e3, I play queen d6. Looks reasonable. There's a funny idea, which doesn't work at all. I was thinking if he ever moves a knight, I have rook take g2. King takes g2, knight f4, but he would have queen take g2. And time is running low, so I should probably move more quickly. There's a move I'm calculating here which might make sense as queen c7, knight take f5, knight f4. I think that's reasonable. If he takes on d5, I take with rook. If c4, rook take a5. Let's do that. So I'm trying to bait him into taking either my knight or my bishop. 
this could backfire. Maybe I'm overlooking something, but it looks reasonable. Guess if he takes on d5, I'll have to take back with rook. There might be some cases where I might just want to sacrifice, get rid of the knight, or maybe just h5, h4. Queen c7 looks like hope chess. I mean, maybe I'm hoping for him to blunder, but I think the queen is just better placed on c7 too. I mean, I target the pawn, I target the diagonal, I get out of the pin, and my, my hopes and dreams came true. Um, I, I'm not sure if white has a defense here, but I'm pretty sure this should turn out good for black. Because rook take g2 is coming, or knight take e2 is coming. Queen f2, I have knight h3. Bishop take e6, just pawn take e6. So maybe he'll play queen e3, or that. But then I just take on g2. And I'll be up. I'll have a queen for rook and bishop in the end. Anything better? I guess I could take here first. But that gets weird. So let's take here first. And okay, I'll have triple pawns, but I have a queen. I, I have an open G file too. Life is good. F4, fixing one pawn, fixing three pawns. It's kind of sad. But it's still happy. Let's play rook e8. I think the goal is to put the rook on e4 and just target f4. And even if he plays rook e1, rook e4 will come. And now I could win a5 if I want. Oh, what to do? He's passive. I have time. Play h5. Just improve. Ooh, I forgot about that move. I mean, if I lose one of my triple pawns, it's not such a bad thing. I could take on a5 too. But let's not give away the rook. Always play king b8. Yeah, rook e4 is a bad move there. I still have pressure. I want to play uh, queen e3. Target the c pawn. It's the only undefended pawn that he has. And he can't really challenge the e file. Okay, let's throw in a check. This is a type of move I'm not really calculating. I'm just assuming I check. And maybe, maybe I check here. And maybe it should lead to something. Or maybe not. Yeah, it's just leading to a trade. Probably should have calculated that. He's going to play rook f3 next. But what to do? It is not easy to win. I mean, the goal is either to somehow win a pawn or make a pass pawn. But, I mean, first I might have to create a weakness or activate my king. I mean, I'm still in good control. I might want to look to play h4 at some point if it works. Like, rook f3, h4 could be some idea. Wow, so he's just giving me the pawn. I was expecting either rook c2 or rook f3 there. Um, but now all... I mean, everything is falling. This is all attacked. And he just resigns. Wow. I was not expecting the game to end in, like, one more move. Um, but okay, his time situation was bad, too. 
Pondemonium. I like that. Have to keep that in mind for a stream title in the future. Okay, so that was fun. Triple pawns, not necessarily a bad thing when you have a queen and your opponent doesn't. Yeah, I was happy. Um, happy with the position. And pieces came to life. I was not reading the chat too much. People were saying stuff. I was trying to avoid looking at suggestions. I can program my mouse buttons and customize them. Ooh. Have to get around to that. Giant hello from Columbia. Well, hello. Columbia, Missouri or Columbia, the country? Deadman DM is joining as like just as I'm about to end things because I'm hungry and I'm tired 